So our next topic is uh, ridge regression in the lasso. Uh, You'll be happy to know that uh, the Python professional is back. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Trevor. OK, um, so we, we just saw a forward stepwise selection, which gives us a way to choose important variables in a model. And um, we'll see uh, these other two methods, ridge regression and the lasso. Ridge regression isn't really a selection method, but the lasso is something, something like forward, forward uh, stepwise that it does model selection as well as, as estimation. OK, so we're going to use. Um, the uh, elastic net method uh, from scikit-learn. And we use that uh, to be for simplicity in that it fits both the ridge regression and the lasso. Uh, in fact, there's a, it sort of interpolates between them. That's one of the things we, we saw in the, in the chapter. And I'll just make a note here that when you run this code right now, there are a lot of warnings for ridge regression in particular. And that has something to, to do with a, um, you know, arguably a a bug. Uh, in, in any case, the solution is actually fine, so we can ignore those warnings uh, for now in any case, but just, just a heads up. OK. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the same data. Uh, now, in the chapter when we talked about ridge regression and lasso, we noted that it's, it's common to scale the data before you use ridge regression and lasso just because so you're penalizing each variable in a comparable fashion. So we're going to uh, scale the data first. We could have used the, the standard scalar method, but we just, at this point, hand scale it. Um, and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get a ridge uh, solution path. So that's using this scikit-learn elastic net dot path method. And for that, um, we give it this array of values of lambda. The argument lambda is called alpha in the, in the elastic net package, but that's what lambda is in the book. And this L1 ratio here, this is the, that parameter that uh, interpolates between the ridge regression estimator and the lasso estimator. So at 0, this is the ridge regression estimator. And at 1, it's the lasso estimator. So we'll see later when we do the lasso, all we have to change is this from 0 to 1. OK, and uh, so we, we ask for this path. And it gives us uh, a 19 by 100 matrix. There are 19 features. And we have 100 values of lambda. So each row of this is going to be a, a, a path for a single coordinate. And we'll plot those in just a second. So we can look at the, um, the data. Uh, and here what I've done, scikit-learn doesn't actually have variable names. But I've added some variable names to the features and an index of lambda values so uh, to be a little you know, more, more informative. But you can see now um, I've transposed that array. So now each column is a solution path as a function of lambda down here. OK, let's get to the plot. Here's a plot. Um, and so you That's can a pretty plot. Yeah, so the, they're, they're nice smooth curves, the, the ridge regression estimator. The legend's a little bit big. We might want to you know, put that in a different place if we were producing. But it's in, a, it's in a good place. At least it's not sitting over the coefficient path. So but Jonathan, each curve is what? Each curve corresponds to one of the features. So I think this blue one here is at bat. And you know, unfortunately, the color blue repeated a little bit. But I, I'm going to say that this is the coefficient for at bat. Um, and when lamb this is minus log lambda down here. So this corresponds to a very large value of lambda. And that's a lot of penalization. And we can see that all the coefficients under here are right around 0. And then as lambda gets smaller and smaller, that is minus log lambda grows, we get towards the ordinary least squares solution. So these values here should correspond pretty closely to if we just fit OLS. Lovely plot. OK. So you can uh, extract you know, individual coefficients, if you like, um, by, uh, well, just by t looking at the solution path we, we, we constructed. And what uh, we're going to see here is that for different values of lambda, so uh, remember, lambda is decreasing as we increase the index. So we'll compare lambda, the 40th entry, lambda 39, to the 50th, lambda 59. And what we should see is that at 59, we sort of relaxed the penalty so it should be a bit bigger. So we're just going to you know, compute the, you know, we can inspect the coefficients, but we'll just compute the norms at the two different values. So at, at the 40th lambda, the coefficient vector has length 24. And at the 60th lambda, the coefficient vector has length 160. And you can see that you know, these are just two different places on this axis as we go down the path, the, the vector gets longer. So that's the, the sum of squares of the coefficients. 
yes. at those two different values of lambda. Yes. Uh, well, so, sorry, it's the square root. It's the norm. It's the square yeah, root. I just, sorry. just looking yeah. at that. Yeah, I, you know, it is related. I just wanted to answer it correctly, so I look, check the code. So yes. the code is helpful. Okay. Um, so we had we had computed the above with using the path method, but if you want just a single value, you can use the elastic net estimator and set and give it a specific value of alpha rather than a path of alphas. Um, so earlier I said we could have used the scalar to uh, to standardize our um, our data. We had hand scan hand standardized data before. We're going to instead combine these methods now in this thing called a pipeline. So this is a, a scikit-learn object that allows you to combine different steps of a procedure. Um, and it might seem a little bit like overkill, but um, what's nice about the pipeline is we'll see later, uh, you can, each of these estimators have different tuning parameters and you could like wiggle them a little bit and then automatically cross-validate over different grids of the parameters. So I see. So is the point here, Jonathan, that each time we, if we use cross-validation, in each fold we want to s standardize the training data in the fold. Yeah, that's what, using this pipeline, that will do and that. And that will do it for you. Yes. Whereas so if that's very handy. Yeah. Whereas if you call, if we just, if we used our X scale here that we had done before, it would have done a global standardization, yes. not within each fold. Okay. So that's for something like standardization, it may not matter too much, but for other transformations, you might want to repeat it on each fold. So yeah. this pipeline method allows you to do that. I can see it's very useful. Yeah. Yes. And so the pipeline method is just another scikit-learn estimator, so we can cross-validate it yeah. just like any other scikit-learn estimator, um, and it will give us an estimate of whatever metric we use. We saw earlier you could we could compute negative CP with this or whatever mm -hmm. custom metric is. Can't wait to see the result. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and one, as, as we'll see, one of the other nice things is that you can search over variations in the parameters here, right? Ridge has a parameter we saw up here. Where is, oh, it's right here. Ridge has a parameter alpha. If we give a, the same set of alphas that we give to the path argument, it will search over those same paths to find okay. the optimal CV. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's use um, the uh, scikits learns cross-validation, or in this case, we're going to do a test train split. Uh, it's using the same cross-validation function, but it's actually going to compute a, use the validation method to estimate um, error. And I, we know that it's using the validation method because instead of using k-fold, we're using this shuffle split, and this corresponds Test size is 50%. That corresponds to split test and training equally. Mm -hmm. And uh, setting the random state fixes the split uh, for so that when we rerun this code, we'll get the same answer. Um, so this gives us, you know, using, uh, oh, this is just using the ridge. Oh, I guess I should have, maybe we should have used pipe here. Uh, but th so this is the, the cross-validation error of the ridge estimator. And that's one of the, um, the parts of the pipeline. Okay, and we can you know, change the parameters of the estimator, rerun cross-validation, um, and it will use the same split as it did previous because we had fixed the state. And at this point, we've used a very large value of lambda to get something like the null model. So the null cross-validation error, or null uh, test error with a test train split is about uh, 230,000 compared to about 134,000 for the ridge estimator, so quite an improvement. And if we wanted to use uh, um, cross-validation, a k-fold, of course, all we would have to do is change this argument here to be some uh, a k-fold argument mm -hmm. instead of the, t the, the, the test training split. So now we'll do the same thing, but we'll, um, we're going to use the pipe estimator, which actually scales and standardizes um, each time. And we're going to. This is an example here that where we'll see how to search over a grid of parameters. So this uh, this function grid search CV, it takes some form of cross validation. In this case, this is this test train split we saw above, um, and it takes. Of course, we have to describe the variation in the parameters. So that's this argument param grid. And so we've told the way, the format of this is, uh, is well, there was an estimator called ridge. And it has an alpha parameter, so this ridge double underscore alpha, this is tells sklearn 
to vary alpha along all these values lambdas. And those are the same 100 values we saw before. OK. And as I said, if we want to use k-fold cross-validation instead of the tr test train split, we would just give this argument the k-fold argument. So now when we, this again is an estimator, a scikit-learn estimator, so we again fit it on our x and y. And then at the end, it has these, uh, these new attributes, the best params and the best estimator. And our grid of parameters here only had a single entry. So the best params you know, has an entry for ridge alpha. Um, and this best estimator is, well, this pipeline where the ridge alpha is set to the best alpha. So um, that's what this returns. OK. Let's see. And of course, we could have, um, there's maybe not, for our, for our pipeline here, there's not that many other interesting parameters in the scalar, but yeah. there could have been something maybe in the, we could have tuned the L1 ratio mm -hmm. um, to go from ridge regression to lasso, but we haven't even seen lasso yet, yeah. so we'll see that coming up. OK. So besides finding the best estimator, it also um, computes the, the, the score within each fold, like we did by hand before, mm -hmm. right? So earlier we saw for forward stepwise, we had uh, 20 models and five different folds. So we had 20 by 5 matrix of mean squared error. Uh, for, the, for this data here, we'll have about 100. There'll be a 100 by 5 mm -hmm. matrix. Um, and it actually uh, computes the mean test score for us and the standard deviation of the test score oh. all, all by itself. Oh. So it's done what we did by hand automatically. Very good. And so we can make a plot similar to what we saw in forward stepwise, but the axis here is different. This is the regularization parameter. Mm -hmm. In forward stepwise, this was the, uh, the, the, the complexity here was going from the null model, which is an intercept, to all 20 features. Here it goes from the null model to, well, the o o OLS model, but along this ridge path. And we'll see for the lasso a similar path shortly. Similar a little bit to forward stepwise in that it doesn't increase at the, uh, the end. It just sort of gets down and stays flat. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we talk about in the book that, you know, ex eventually you'd expect these curves to sort of turn up. But for the data sets we've happened to use, we haven't seen the overfitting, uh, in a very drastic overfitting. There's a slight turn up, but it's not abrupt. Um, then again, it's only 20 features, so it's not yeah. that complicated a model. When picking... Uh, you know, optimizing parameters in a CV grid, you have to pick your metric. So here I, we included this metric we wanted to use mean squared error, and of course to maximize it, it's negative mean squared error. Mm -hmm. So that's what that string indicates. Yeah. If we hadn't done that, it would be R squared. So that's what the last plot here shows. So without s saying anything, the, uh, met the estimator uses R squared as a metric, and this is, similarly, there'll be a 100 by 5 matrix of R squared, we will average those and, um, and get the centered errors. That's mm -hmm. what this plot is producing. OK. And of course, it has the same form because R squared is very closely related. OK. So lastly, I want to talk about uh, something for, um, for ridge reg both ridge regression and the lasso, is that there are very fast methods to do cross-validation. So we uh, above, we searched over Lambda using the grid the, the pipeline and the grid search CV method. There are custom built ones for, for elastic net. That's this elastic net CV function. OK, so what this is essentially going to do is the same thing we just did, but it's, it's, it's very specially built for the elastic net, uh, that is the ridge estimator, and upcoming the lasso estimator, oh, okay. because uh, it's a commonly used method. So if we plot the MSE out of that, this plot is unsurprisingly very similar to what we saw before. Uh, this was just to show there's a specialized method. OK. Um, so I think, uh, well, the, uh, we're, I'm going to skip this in the interest of time. So what this section of code, what it does is it recognizes that in tuning a parameter like by cross-validation, we might we are sti still somewhat left in the without a, without an honest estimate of error. So what this split what we've done here is split into training and test, run cross validation on the training data, 
and then evaluate the final estimator on the test data. Oh. And so that's why there's a split here into training and test, a k-fold, cross-validation, and well, that's what the code will, will compute here. So it's 132,000. It's not that different from the actual cross-validated one we saw before. OK, so our final uh, method in this uh, lab is the, the lasso. And as, as we mentioned earlier in the lab, this is a, a method that does selection, like forward stepwise, as well as regularized estimation, like ridge regression. Um, and so as we mentioned earlier, the, the difference between ridge and lasso in terms of the code, at least this version of the code we're using, is this L1 ratio. At 0, this is the ridge estimator. At 1, it's the lasso estimator. So we're going to you know, fit a, path of a lasso path of solutions using the same function, elastic net CV we saw above, um, though it will give us the lasso fit this time instead of the ridge fit because of this difference in the parameters. OK, so as we did for the ridge regression, we can make a data frame. And you can inspect that, if you like, of the, the solution paths to the, um, the lasso. And we can also make a plot. Uh, like we did for the ridge estimators. So this plot is going to be interpreted very similarly to the ridge regression estimator, though it looks a little bit different. Um, let's see, Trevor, what's the biggest thing you notice about this plot? The biggest thing I notice is it's it's not as smooth as the, as the earlier one. And, uh, and some coefficients are zero for a, a large portion of the path, and then they jump away from zero. Of course, of course, Trevor knew the answer to that question <laughs> before. But okay, <laughs> so yes, the lasso. Um, if you note, know, for at my age, you <laughs> can't rely on that. <laughs> uh, so for for some large values of lambda, remember this is minus log lambda. So these are large values mm. of lambda. So a lot of the coefficients are zero, and in fact, hidden under this legend, which is um, a little unfortunate, they're all zero at the beginning, and then some co coefficients come in one by one, and sometimes they actually go out. I'm not sure. Yes, in this, we can see maybe a little coefficient come off and then go back to 0 and then come off again. Mm. So these paths are, well, as we change lambda, the lasso solution changes. And what's notable about the lasso, as we talked about in the lecture, is, of course, that it can do selection. It can set some coefficients exactly to 0. So if we select a value of lambda around here, then uh, this will correspond to a, you know, we'll have a, a solution with maybe this looks like 7 or 8 non-zero coefficients out of a total 20. Um, so this this estimate this is sort of in between the ridge and forward stepwise, and it's a you know quite a popular estimator. Okay, we can uh, look at our our um, test error. Uh, so using the optimal test error for ridge, I guess our going back was one hundred fifteen thousand for lasso. It's about one hundred and fifteen thousand. Very yeah, similar. Very similar. Yes, yeah. and. Let's just look at one big difference before I go back to the plot. One big difference is that when we looked at the, um, the optimal choice of lambda, the coefficient vector for the lasso actually does have some zeros. So it's actually selected, I think, five or six coefficients out of the 19 to be 0, whereas the ridge, of course, all of them are non-zero. Some mm -hmm. of them might be small, but they're non-zero. And as in the ridge regression example, we can also make this plot of cross-validated mean squared error to choose, and I've indicated here the, uh, the lambda selected as the best um, using uh, this, the 5 fold k cross-validation. OK, so that wraps up the lab for chapter 6 for what we'll talk about today. There is an additional section on principal components regression and partial least squares regression that uh, we encourage you to do offline.